Today is November 10, 2016, and this is a CFTA New Business Partner Welcome Webinar. Please join me in welcoming Campus Bird to CFTA membership. Campus Bird is a leader in forward-facing interactive maps for higher education. I'm Michelle Ellington, CFTA President and the moderator of today's webinar, and I'd like to welcome and thank all of our attendees joining us today. Today's one-hour webinar is being recorded. The video will be made available on the CFTA Business Partner webpage. The presentation is estimated to run about 45 minutes with the remaining time dedicated for Q&A. Feel free to send any questions using the questions dialog box, either during the presentation or save it for the end. I would like to extend a special thank you to today's presenter, Brian Rakoff, who is an account executive with Concept3D, the parent company for Campus Bird. Brian, thanks so much for putting this webinar together, and welcome to CFTA. All right. Well, thank you for the introduction, Michelle, and we are happy to be here. We've joined within the last year and actually just went to our very first uh, CFTA annual gathering in Boulder, uh, which is exciting because I went to the University of Colorado at Boulder, and we're located just up the street. It was about a five-minute drive to get down to the conference, and of course, we were on home turf, so very happy to be there. I wanted to start off here with this slide, uh, just to explain a little bit about Concept3D, who we are, uh, and tell you a little bit more about the Campus Bird offering. So let me go ahead and explain the history here. So I'm sure that some people in the room have heard of SketchUp. Uh, SketchUp was something, and still is a technology used to create 3D models and imagery, um, and was acquired by Google, if you can remember, in 2006. So from that acquisition, we were formed. We actually have some senior members of SketchUp on our team. Um, and we have two offices, as I mentioned, one in Boulder and one in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Now, we've continued you know, in the SketchUp uh, vein by doing 3D images, excuse me, imagery and modeling for several different industries. Most notably, however, we work with Disneyland which is great fun for us, but they're also an amazing client, and we get to do all of Disneyland's interactive 3D uh, theme park maps. Now, that Disney partnership was and still is strong. However, we recently began to focus in the last four or so years just on the higher education space. So Boston University, we had a, uh, I think an admissions representative from Boston go to Disneyland, use our interactive maps, and then come back and request that we render out their campus in the same type of 3D format. So once that was, was done, uh, we, we began to notice this, this niche that we can provide a lot of value in by creating interactive, mobile-friendly 3D campus maps just for higher education. So here we are, about four years later, five years now, um, getting close to, uh, we have over 250 colleges and universities in the United States on the platform um, and you know, have an exciting uh, roadmap of uh, development work coming up that I'll speak more to. But first, let me just go ahead and, and start here by showcasing some live client maps. The best way to understand CampusBird really is to see it. It's obviously a very visual product, so we'll get started here at Texas A&M University. So, the first thing I'll do here, I'm sorry, is zoom out a little bit, right? The um, first thing you're going to notice is that there's no edges, there's no borders to this campus map, right? Our clients have the ability to highlight anything in the surrounding location. We have people using this for, you know, best hospitals to stay at, or excuse me, <laughs> not to stay at, hospitals to visit if you need, hotels to stay at, best places to eat in the surrounding area, things like that. And the reason that's all possible is we pull, and you can see here at the bottom, um, we have this mapping capability here from OpenStreetMap. So we basically work with OpenStreetMap's API to pull in all of their information and give that world map view. We can do the same thing with Google Maps. So if Google's come to campus and has extensive you know, street view imagery or has plotted all of your, uh, your, your wayfinding routes, we can use Google's API to do the same thing. Texas A&M has chosen OpenStreetMaps, and we can talk a little bit more about the difference there once we get a little further along. So 
I'll zoom back in. And now we'll, we'll begin to see these 3D renderings that I'm talking about. Really, this is in the lifeblood of the company, and we still use SketchUp and some additional Adobe products and technology to create these interactive um, maps complete with models. You can see the level of detail we can go to in terms of taking Kyle Field here at a and and really rendering out specifics, logos, some cool stuff they've done on the grounds work, statues, memorials. We want to make sure that we're doing your campus justice. And so we'll take every step to render it out appropriately in this 2D plus 3D format. We unfortunately cannot click and rotate around the models for a true 3D experience, though that, that is on the roadmap for next year. So once these models are created, we give you a flat file, which means that once we've you know, done them, we actually give you a version that you can own, work on, and print out or do any kind of other cool marketing materials. In fact, Texas A&M University took the rendering that we created, put it into a print map, a trifold, and sent it out to all their potential visitors, I believe, that they were you know, expecting within the next year or two. So this 3D rendering doesn't just live on the internet you guys get a hard copy and can do with it what you'd like. Now, after the rendering is created and we have set up the campus map, we then give you all access to a content management system. With this content management system, you guys can log in, add, and edit as much information as you want to that's obviously relevant to the university. So Texas A&M University has Choose, has chosen things like points of interest around campus, academic and administrative locations, on-campus housing, dining, and you'll see the map automatically adjust itself to move out to include uh, all the locations included in that category. Dining, etc. You guys can add as much content to Campus Bird as you want. Right? There's no limit on the number of categories or locations that you can add. But we really see every client do it a little bit differently. Right? Let's say that I fly over here to Rice University. They do things like um, accessibility information. And these all have subcategories, right? So automatic accessible entrances, bus stops, curb cuts. They've really done a great job putting all their accessible information in here and making it obvious in terms of you know, where their curb cuts are, where you can find AD accessible entrances, and accessible restrooms within buildings. But anyways, things like arts and performance areas, Parking lots, obviously that's a big one. Sustainability initiatives, transportation. You guys really can get creative on what you want to display to anyone who's visiting your campus map. Now there is, you know, these, these, these locations, these pins, you can click into these for additional information. They don't just show up as a visual guide. Let me show you what I mean. I'll toggle on the academic and administrative locations where I can click down and look for specific buildings, and as I mouse over things, you'll see the corresponding pin pop up. But let's just say I click into this location. You guys now have the ability to add high quality content, be it pictures or videos, we can do YouTube or Vimeo videos and any type of still image, to this location. You can then add a description of this building, links out to other parts of the website, and whatever other content you want to supplement with. So you'll see that Rice did things like, when was it built? Who is this named for? A link out to every department you can find here, as well as some basic history and pictures of, of buildings. Again, you guys can fill these, these boxes with as much or as little information as you want to. And you'll see this theme is kept consistent across different locations at Rice University. Now, Texas a and I'll go back here. They have it open slightly differently. So if I zoom back in here and click on these points of interest, they've added instead you know, a nice big logo here, just a simple link and description. So again, however you guys want to do it, and there's several different ways, the customizability there through the content management system, which I'll show later, allows you to do that. Now, there's some cool functionality tied into each one of these locations. It's not just pictures and descriptions. You may have noticed a directions and a share button up here at the top. So the share button is pretty powerful. 
and as part of my job, I get to visit a lot of college campuses. I love to do it. I get to travel a lot. Um, but I do get there 15 minutes early because I know I'm going to get lost. Right? It's just inevitable. I'm going to be parking in the wrong area. I'm going to be on the wrong side of campus. It's just something that I've come to expect. Now, what Campus Bird allows you to do is make you know, visiting campus a lot easier for whomever, prospective students, alumni, even current students on their first day. So one thing I've done is clicked into visitor parking. When I click this on, we can see obviously where these locations are, but they've had these locations pop up in a nice green box that you can then click into. Now the share button, this is where this comes into effect. Let's say that I'm visiting campus. All you have to do is click the share button, get a link to this location, and share it with me, right? You copy paste it, you can email or text this to me. And as soon as I click on it, it's going to open your campus map and fly me directly to that location. So everything is shareable on CampusBird. You may have also noticed when I click share, we get a link to embed this directly in the website. So if you wanted to, the University Center parking garage, maybe that has a web page all to its own. You can take this link, embed it directly in that web page so that students and visitors can click out directly from the web to a campus map and see where it is. Of course, right next to that share button, there's a directions button. Right? So now, once I know where to go, I can click directions without ever leaving campus for it and get driving, bicycling, public transit, and walking directions. Now, I can get these directions from a set location. If I could, you know, type in an address and click Get Directions, we'll give them a readout of where they are and where they need to go. But I can also click From My Location. Now, From My Location allows um, the user to tell us where they are, and then, of course, we get them a customized set of directions based on where they're sitting or standing to this final destination. Now, these directions do pull from either Google or OpenStreetMaps. And let me show you what they look like if I was, let's say, coming from College Station, which is obviously nearby. We're going to illustrate how to get there, as well as provide a text description to get you to the final destination. Now, you'll notice these are different for things like walking, right? Now we come down here from the main drag through the university to this parking structure. So just to show you that these directions are illustrated, and you never need to leave the platform to get, you know, to find out how to get from one location to the next. And of course, this is all doable on a smartphone. So the whole platform is responsive in design. And I'll shrink my window down here. You'll have to um, ignore the uh, slideshow in the background. Actually, let me go ahead and get this get back up to the main page. There we go. But you'll see the responsive design now that we're in. So the search bar moves up here to the top. Anyone that's visiting uh, on a mobile phone can come in here and look for locations. I just typed in hall, so I'm going to get a lot of results. I can click into locations, check them out, learn more about them. You would swipe this open with your thumb, click down on what you're looking for. It all works as you would expect it to on a smartphone. There's even a little button here in the bottom right-hand corner, which is the Find Me button. When I click that button, we're going to pop up a nice blue GPS dot and show the user where they're currently standing. So again, that My Location integration here should help students and just anyone coming to the campus to find out where they are should they get disoriented or lost. So the responsive design, of course, fits into any mobile app that you guys may have developed or want to develop. Otherwise, you can put this into any kind of responsive web format, and it should work perfectly. So there's some cool stuff we can do as well with the rendering. It's not just exterior like we've seen so far. We can also take this and apply it to the insides of buildings. I just jumped over here to the University of San Diego, and I'll zoom in a little bit where they've had us render out the insides of most of their buildings. So what I'll do is I'll use this little floor selector tool to pop the roof off. Now, as I zoom in a little bit farther, we can see a highly detailed breakdown of what goes on in this building. Labeling classrooms, bathrooms, elevators and stair locations. 
We can do this, of course, across multiple floors, all the way into the basement, all using this floor selector. Now, these are nice just to tell people you know, what's going on inside, but we wanted to take it a step farther. So these are also interactive. Let's say I click here in Camino Hall CH156. It opens just like an exterior location, allowing you guys to add content, links, description. You can also share interiors. And if you get our uh, internal wayfinding engine, you can get directions to them as well. And I'll show you what the internal wayfinding engine looks like in a second. But the University of San Diego is an interesting example. They use our interior rendering specifically to reserve rooms. So you'll notice a link here at the bottom that says reserve this room. I'll go ahead and click that. What we then do is just fly out to their event scheduling system where someone can, once they log in, reserve this room directly from the campus map. Now in this situation, we simply just link out to this event scheduling system. This is not something that we do, but just to give you an idea, when we have interiors that are interactive, it opens up some possibilities like this for the University of San Diego and other clients. Now, what's really nice about getting interiors is that we, it can be combined in, not sure if that's a word, I think so, with our point-to-point -point internal wayfinding engine. So it says, it's labeled as walking directions up here next to the satellite image. I'll go ahead and click walking directions just to show you how this works. But first, let's do it on the outside. So this system can be used just to provide a more visual representation of how to get around campus. From one point to the other, what we do is provide a line, the quickest route in between these two locations. So this is used to supplement the directions or the wayfinding that you get from Google Maps or OpenStreetMaps. But what people really want to use this for is finding their way around the inside of a building. So now I'll show you a little bit on how this works on the inside. So we'll pop the roof off, click walking directions. Again, I get that start and end marker. And in the mobile responsive view, by the way, you drag these with your thumb. So let's say I'm here, floor one, in this computer lab. And I want to get to this building and this classroom. You'll see what we're going to do is provide the user with a visual representation of how to do just that. Now these routes are actually approved and designed by the University of San Diego. So you guys help us by telling us the best way to get around campus. Of course, these can go from either the same building or even across the street to another building. What you'll notice is that we take the user out to this crosswalk instead of just sending them across the middle of the street. That's what I mean by the University of San Diego has actually helped us program these routes in here. But we can do multiple floors all the way across campus. You'll see some of the routes it takes you on. Again, we use, in, in this iteration, this, this tool is pretty new. It's only about six months old. And we're getting users there as quickly as possible. So we use both stairs and elevators, which means that we're not fully compliant with ADA accessibility yet on this wayfinding tool. But part of our development pipeline for next year is to make a ADA accessible version of these walking directions where we only use elevators, make sure that we have curb cuts in there, and so that is something that's going to be coming soon. But just to give you an idea of where we're headed as a company, this point-to-point -point wayfinding has been a pretty exciting development so far. So, some additional tools here, one of which is a custom print map generator. Right, so obviously we've seen how this looks, and I just flipped over here to Bowling Green, how this looks on a mobile phone, how this looks on a desktop, but we wanted to make sure you guys could take all this information and create a hard copy of it. Right, we know that not every visitor to Campus Bird or, you know, to the physical campus is going to be on the latest and greatest technology. So, up in the top right-hand corner here, you'll see something called a Generate Print Map. And what you'll notice is that as an end user, let's say any visitor to your campus map, they can print themselves a map. 
right? So this is not just an option that's available to you as administrators. Any user or any visitor to the campus map can print themselves one. So let me zoom in a little bit. I'll then click Generate Print Map. What's going to happen is this red dotted box pops up. This box is going to be everything that's included here in the print map. What's nice about this box is you can dynamically size it to make sure you're getting exactly the content you want to. I'm just going to do uh, focus on this little square here at BGSU. I'll then start toggling on exactly what I want to. Maybe I want to do buildings. I'll turn on all types of buildings. Um, I'll do sustainability information. And I'll do transportation, right? How are people getting around? Here are some bike racks. So you guys can turn on exactly what you want to. Choose from a couple of options, like the file type, like you know, letter, landscape, um, you know, grid lines. You can even give these print maps a title. So maybe if this is for an event, you can call this, you know, whatever event name, put that title on the campus map just to make it very clear uh, what this print map should be used for. So anyways, a couple options. Click Generate Print Map at the bottom. And now what we were aiming to do is to take everything that you guys have toggled on, put it in the sidebar. We're going to automatically number it. We're going to print some grid lines and a north-facing arrow so that by the time you click that Generate Print Map button, it's pretty much done. You guys can take this file, which can take up to a minute to download, and just start printing it out, handing it out to people. There shouldn't be any more work post-production after we generate this print map for you. So here you go. Download it. I'm just going to click the file. You'll see it's done exactly that. I'll zoom out a little bit, but it's numbered everything automatically. Actually, I'll zoom in so you guys can see how we uh, do the numbering system. Um, print some grid lines that north facing arrow and branded it for you with the appropriate colors so that in pretty short order what you have now are these nice good looking print maps in case anyone's wondering you can turn the renderings off just to save you guys some ink we can still do the same functionality without our renderings on there but if you do leave the renderings on you can take this file and blow it up a little bit so we can easily do like 3 by 5 at 150 DPI. So you can use this maybe for physical signage or for a larger version of uh, the campus map. Right, so now when you can use our print map generator, what you have with CampusBird is the same mobile experience, the same web experience, and the same print experience. Right, it's a very simple extension of you know, all the campus mapping needs you guys, you know, whatever want. So that was the goal there. Now, on to some of the more exciting stuff. Live data feed integrations. So when I say that, that means a lot of things, right? But the big picture is that at CampusBird, we've really, really been working this year on taking data that you guys might have in form of maybe a live camera, bus tracking information, parking lot heat maps, whatever, and putting that information into the CampusBird platform so that you can show it off within the same web page. So let me give you some physical examples here. Rice University, we're back here, they have a transit tab. Now this transit tab is specifically for their bus routes. So let me zoom out a little bit. And Rice, like we're seeing many clients do recently, tracks their buses in real time. And you'll see these buses update themselves around the campus map. Rice uses a company called Ride Systems. We establish an API. We talk to Ride Systems, get that information, and do an update about every, I think it maybe is every two or three seconds to show where these buses are in real time on the campus map. You can even scroll down here and find just the line that you're looking for. I just have all the lines turned on for maximum you know, visual effect. So that's a cool example. Something else that we do actually at Rice, we've done our first ever events calendar integration. So Rice University has an events management system, as I'm sure you all do. What they wanted to do was put their events 
at Rice into the Campus Bird map without duplicating effort. So what we established was a way where they could keep using their event calendar like they have before you know, they started using our campus maps. And then we would just simply feed in those events. I think every night we cache into that calendar and see what's different. So when I toggle on events at Rice, you'll see that they have today's events, tomorrow's, and upcoming. So when I click into these locations, they have all their information here. What is this called? Where is this? Who are the sponsors? Who's speaking? Et cetera, et cetera. And again, what's really cool about this is that they don't have to use our content management system to put these on the campus map. It's a live data feed where we take from their event management system upcoming events and put them into the campus map automatically. We can even create this cool event details button. So I could click out and learn more about this lecture series. Now, this, you know, these live data feeds, obviously they can be for just about anything you guys can imagine. But one of them, and I flip on over here to IU Bloomington, um, and this is one of our more recent data feeds, is we're actually taking uh, their ArcGIS data at Indiana University and automatically feeding it into CampusBird. So IU uses ArcGIS and they didn't want to have to use our CMS to just, you know, basically they'd be duplicating work, right? They'd be making changes in ArcGIS and they'd have to come over here to CampusBird and make the same changes. So what we've done is we've created a JSON-based feed that imports select information, so IU tells us what they want to and what they don't want to put into CampusBird, but if they make a change in their ArcGIS system, we then reflect all that information onto CampusBird. And we do that specifically for all of their buildings. So all of this building information comes directly from their ArcGIS server. Now that's just a one-way feed. But there's no reason we can't actually do a two-way feed as well. What a two-way feed would look like is that every change you make in a GIS system or whatever reflects live on the campus bird, and any change you make in the campus bird reflects back in to your GIS system of choice. And that's something we're actually working with Penn Bay to create for Penn State University. So Penn Bay Solutions and, and, and uh, Campus Bird, uh, we're working on a two-way system where changes made in Penn Bay will reflect on the Campus Bird, and changes made in the Campus Bird CMS will go back to Penn Bay. That way, we're not duplicating efforts, right? We're not making you change the same thing in two different in two different areas, which just helps things flow a lot more easily and creates less confusion about you know what's been done and the work that needs to be done. So these live data feeds, again, in the last six or so months, we've really seen them take off and look forward to doing a lot more cool stuff like that in the future. Now, just a couple more basic things here, one of which is 360 panoramas, right? So um, if, if you've been to many conferences this year, you will have noticed a theme, or at least we have, and that is everyone's going kind of the virtual reality route. Right? They want to have 360 imagery and video. And so by the end of this year, Campus Bird is going to be completely VR compatible. What that means is when I click into these 360 degree images, which are something that we can come to campus and take, or if you guys have the appropriate uh, technology and bandwidth, you guys can take these yourself. This guy <laughs> is awesome. It's giving away free hugs. Just perfect timing there. Right, so by the end of this year, we're going to be able to do 360 images and video to meet that VR compliance. But as of now, these 360-degree panoramas are just a nice way to enhance you know, the campus map offering. Allow someone to click directly into here and get those nice high-quality imagery. Now, of course, these are shareable. Just like everything else on Campus Bird, I can give people a direct link to this. And what's nice about choosing these 360-degree panoramas is that if you do so and CampusBird shoots them, we just give you the file. So we come to campus whenever you want, we shoot them wherever you want, and then you just own the file. So really it's an investment in getting some 360 imagery um, for the university. 
Now, another major thing I want to touch on, <clears throat> and it really combines everything we've talked about, is the ability to use CampusBird for events around campus. So what I'm going to do is show you some of the events our clients have been using this for. And what I'm going to need to do here is pull open a CMS version of the platform. So this will be a nice segue into the content management system, which I can show you guys how to use. So back here at Bowling Green State, we are now in the content management system. Right, you'll notice there's a lot of links up here at the top. There's an edit button on just about everything. So obviously this is what you guys see as administrators. And I'll log in a little bit just to show you some of the stuff that Bowling Green State does around the course of the year. So up here at the top, you'll notice there's a couple things that have an eye with a strike through it. So this eye with a strike through it means that they've added data, they've added content, they just don't want to push it live to any public visitor to be able to see. And a couple of those things are around events. Events that obviously don't really make sense right now, like move-in 2016. So what they've done is they've created a whole category for move-in, they turn it on when they need to, and then they just turn it right back off for use next year. But if I click down on Move 2016, you'll see that they've added a bunch of information, right? All of the halls. Some of our clients do things for move-in like where am I parking? How does traffic change during this? But when I toggle this on, you'll see here how they've used um, the shape tool, the line tool, and everything else to really make this a color-coded um, you know, long-term parking options up here. Um, you know, just put a bunch of logistical information into one place for an event. They do the same thing with something called Preview Day, which is for prospective students. And on Preview Day, that's some pretty interesting stuff going on. Like, where do I check in? Where's the check-in area? You can click over here and easily see that. Okay, cool. Here's where you check in. Here's the time for a couple different, um, looks like, speakers that they're having. Where can I get food on this day? Okay, there's a food service category, and now I can see where I can eat, et cetera, et cetera. So by putting your, your moving inform or excuse me, your event information on Campus Bird, you can A, provide people with a great web and mobile way to view events, and B, hopefully save you guys some time versus editing a PDF map and sending that out to people, or typing out massive text descriptions and sending that out. So again, we've seen events of all kinds. In fact, Texas A&M University um, was the first client of ours that used move-in day and didn't use anything but the online version of uh, their campus map to display all that information. And during Texas A&M's move-in event, we at CampusBird saw 65% visitors on a mobile device, which is pretty crazy for us. Usually we see about 40, 45% on a mobile, but this time we were up to 65%, which really made us think, you know, the times are changing. People are on their smartphones now more than ever for information. And so we've, we've really been sure to uh, shore up our mobile um, uh, features and, of course, usability. Just a little interesting information that we picked up. So while we're on the CMS, let's talk about how you can edit and, of course, manage all of your data. So one thing that's cool here at BGSU, they do a lot of things well, but one is the construction category, right? Where I toggle this on and they've used this nice translucent orange uh, to tell us what's going on here. So I can click into these locations and see some, some uh, renderings of what this building's going to be. Okay, read about the description, when it's going to be done, how much it costs, why are you building it, et cetera, et cetera. But let's say that you want to edit this information. Maybe you want to add some links or delete this location. You can come in here, click edit. Now, you guys can change everything about this. The title, the zoom level, you guys can set specific zoom levels, category, media, description, and even keywords for the search bar. Keywords for the search bar, what I mean by this is, you know, there are some buildings on campus that maybe the students will call something. Maybe facilities knows it as something else, but the historical name is something else, 
right? So the keywords allows you to put all those, all those little keywords in there so that whenever anyone's using the search bar, they can find what they're looking for. Okay, so you guys can edit all the information you want to, come in here and then click Save. Once you click Save, the changes move over here to a Publish tab. On this Publish tab, I can review changes and either send them live to the campus map or deny them. This way, you're not publishing incorrect information to thousands of people. All right, so it's easy to edit locations. You guys can obviously edit categories. You can change, or excuse me, you can create new locations, new categories, and new virtual tours all in the content management system. New locations are just as easy. And of course, we're going to teach you how to do this as part of the campus bird development process. We're not just going to leave you, you know, we're not just going to tell you to have fun and kind of drop this in your lap. We host as many training seminars as you want to get everybody on board and up to speed. But let's say you want to, let's say, uh, mark this parking lot off because, you know, maybe it's, it's going to be under construction or um, this is for an event. Come in here, make a simple shape. Everything is totally color codable. Maybe you make this bright red, give it a title, add some media, type out a description, and again, you just click Save. So pretty simple to, to, to keep things up to date and to create brand new locations. While you're back here, of course, there's tons of options, which again, you know, I don't want to keep you guys here all afternoon, but there's a bunch of options. We have a Google Analytics plugin ID so you guys can start tracking who's coming to the map and how they're using it. There's a styles tab, which allows you to keep the branding and colors and fonts all up to date and appropriate and a whole bunch of other options here at the top. In terms of how we give you the campus map, it's just an embed code. I clicked on the embed tab here on the CMS. You guys copy and paste this embed code into an iframe wherever you want to on the website. So really, it looks pretty seamless when it's all said and done on your website. It's hard to tell that this is a campus bird publication, right? Some of, you know, one of the major things that we wanted to make sure we're doing is allowing you guys to, to brand it, right? And you know, put it in the website as such, it doesn't really feel like you're ever leaving uh, your .edu website. Let me give you a finished example at Arizona State University. So I type in Arizona State University map into Google, we'll click onto ASU's webpage. You'll see the URL, asu.edu slash map slash interactive, and here's the iframe, 100% width iframe, ASU's done everything up here at the top, but again, this is Campus Bird. It's really hard to tell that you're not on ASU's website. Or I mean, excuse me, that this campus map is not just something that they've created. So pretty easy to add to your web framework. We can also, of course, add this to a mobile app with a simple um, uh, personalized embed code that we supply. Okay, so the last part about Campus Bird are virtual tours. Campus Bird was created as a map mainly, and that's where we've put most of our um, you know, effort into developing it. Um, but there's also a virtual tour feature that allows you to connect data, connect locations in a very easy to use, you know, easy to manage way. And for that, I'll flip over here to Salve Regina University, one of our smaller clients in the Northeast. They have four virtual tours. One is for admissions, one's for residence halls, but they also have this tree walking tour. They have an amazing collection of trees at Salve Regina. They wanted to highlight them. So I'll click play on the tree walking tour. You'll notice, actually, if you look carefully, and I'll zoom all the way in, we've created a different rendering for every tree they have in this tour. Now, that's pretty above and beyond what we usually do for these renderings, but again, we can get as creative as you want to with how we display information. So this is a Japanese maple. Of course, you can read about this. You guys can add content here. And then you simply click from location to location. We fly around the campus map at the, you know, whatever pace the user wants to, just connecting information in a meaningful way. You'll also notice the red line that connects these locations has been drawn out to make it somewhat walkable. Right? So we can get from location to location if we wanted to take this in person or on an iPad or on even a mobile phone. 
So these virtual tours can be used for serious admissions driven information or just highlighting cool stuff on campus like you know the arboretum you have or the tree collection you have or maybe and we have a client doing this we have a, a historical tour of campus where they take you around the history black and white photographs and tell you about how campus came to be Salve Regina they have another one which is just art concepts right so they have art exhibits on campus and they wanted a way to show this someone digitally so again they use the virtual tour they upload media add descriptions and you can kind of fly around here and get that campus experience without ever actually having to step foot onto campus. So that is the high level version of Campus Bird. Um, and what I thought I'd do now, turn it over uh, to see if anyone has any questions in these last 15 or so minutes or wants me to go back and uh, dig a little deeper into anything I've talked about so far. Okay. Well, thank you, Brian. Um, mm -hmm. Lovely application, I must say. I, um, yeah, uh, I think I first learned about Campus Bird a couple of years ago, and the you know new adoptions, new enhancements, integrations, I think are really going to be so helpful for so many universities, just to get them really up to modern day needs and future needs almost out of the gate. Um, mm -hmm. Pretty impressive. I did have a couple of questions. Sure. Someone asked, and I think I saw you demonstrate it, but someone did ask if you could demonstrate the walking directions from one building on one floor to another building on another floor. You kind of did that, and I could tell that you were going from the first floor to the second floor, mm -hmm. but it was kind of a little tricky switcheroo. Maybe you yeah. can show us that. Sure thing. So let me jump back here to the University of San Diego. Now. What I'll do, again, pop the roof off, click on the walking directions tab. Um, and again, this is all visual right now. So we don't really have a text readout like we do for our standard directions. Let me go ahead and show you what this might look like here. So to the second floor. Now what this does, and I'll zoom in, let's say I put my marker over here and zoom in a little bit. Well, actually, let's, So just let's to try. point out, the second yeah. floor is, I see it noted on the red bubble. Mm -hmm. um, and on the green bubble, to start, it says floor one. Correct. So you, you click on the individual markers, and that's when you toggle between floors? Well, you can toggle between floors right here with the floor selector. And what's going to happen is, let's say I go to the third floor, drag this marker to the third floor. Now you'll see it automatically update to be end floor three. So can you, can you zoom out? Yes, of course. So floor one, though, or the start, uh -huh. bubble, that's not showing you floor one anymore. Correct. Because we're on the third floor, this is the only building with the third floor. If we go back down to the second and then to the first, now we can see that start marker. You'll see it go from light blue to dark blue, which means light blue doesn't, you know, we're not actually looking at it yet. Dark blue, okay. it does apply to you now. Okay, good. Yeah, so we go, we start here and then if, if I zoom back in on the floor three, you'll see that we take the user to an elevator, right? That's what this up and down arrow thing is. So that's how we get them to the third floor. Whoops, excuse me, sorry. We get them to the third floor through the use of that elevator, coming in through the foyer, using the elevator, and up to your classroom. Now, are you experiencing any security issues that the universities are, are mentioning about publishing their floor plans to your application? Yeah, absolutely. That's a great question. Um, we do work with... I think maybe 10% of our clients are K through 12 independent schools, right? And they obviously are much smaller campuses. They want to show what's going on inside, but they don't want to publish that information to anyone. So what we can do on Campus Bird, there's two options. One you're looking at right now. You'll notice the second floor of USD is pretty vague, right? They don't really label any of these classrooms. Now, are these office hours? I'm not sure but they've chosen not to label them. So we can get as vague or as specific as you want to uh, to help mitigate um, those kind of things. But we can take it a step farther and anything on Campus Bird can be made into a private layer. So anything, be it a parking lot, be it construction or an interior floor plan, we can toggle it to private and then only those with a login or only those with the correct URL will be able to see that content. So for at least one school in Texas we're working with, We've created interior floor plans. They're only using them for internal and 
person-to-person -person sharing use, and they're using that private function I just described. Okay. Now, what about your generate map, uh, the, the paper PDF? Uh, printable map. Can you do that with your interior view as well as the, the exterior? Yeah, so the custom print map, and actually this just happened about two months ago, um, we can now print out the insides as well. So if you guys want to print out the inside and maybe slap it on every building, um, it's a good way to kind of use CampusBird for physical signage as well. Oh, that's great. Now what about with uh, directions and routing? Does it include directions in the printout? So with the print map, that's a great question. Let me go ahead and zoom out a little bit. The print map can now print virtual tours. So if you guys did have, like, let's say they have an admissions tour for buildings, we can print a virtual tour um, and hand that out to people. But it doesn't yet print the route. So if, if we did, let's say, a walking direction route and you wanted to print that and hand it to somebody, we're not totally there yet. When I click custom print, this will not show up. So not yet, but that is something, again, next year as we kind of move into version two of this point-to-point -point wayfinding tool um, is, is slated to be possible. With your point-to-point, -point, does it do multiple points on a route or just two at this point? Just two, from start to end. Okay, good. Mm -hmm. Okay, a um, couple questions. You mentioned live feeds with ArcGIS. What about ArcGIS Online organizational accounts? Are there any dev plans to add functionality between the two? Uh, can you tell me a little more about about that? Yeah, ArcGIS Online. <laughs> yeah, ArcGIS Online is like it, it's kind of you know if you you can either man your own server or woman your own servers, however you want to say it, uh, own your own servers. Or you can have an RGS Online Enterprise account that's cloud-based, and they kind of host all your data for you. Uh, you can do RGS Online and still have your own data and serve it out that way. But the general gist of it is that if you have an RGS Online organizational account, you have named users, and you have services that you create that you could then publish into um, you know, mobile applications um, and so forth. It's really heavily used for RGIS collector in the field. So the question is, if there's an organization that is, you know, having their data hosted in RGIS online and they want to publish it out to web services, um, is that something that uh, you guys integrate with? You know, that's a fantastic question, and unfortunately, you stumped me. I don't okay. know if we could do that. Can I? Can I send you kind of a follow up that you can then? Uh, send along with an answer to that question? Absolutely. Okay, Absolutely. Perfect. Okay, right. uh, a couple more questions. What is that background image format? So the background image, uh, we it, it's a rasterized version of, of the, the real deal. We send it to you in a TIFF file, um, which is how we deliver the, the rendering. But we use all kinds of technology, Adobe Illustrator, CSS, SketchUp, and some others to, to put it together. What if someone has their own 3D models already? Mm -hmm. Can they? Can you consume that at all? You know, we don't have a working example of that yet, but I don't see why not. And the reason I say that, we do have one example of a, a client who actually took a PDF map, overlaid a PDF on top of Google Maps, and then used our software underneath to still be able to mark locations and do virtual tours and everything like that. So we know it's possible, but we don't have any live examples with someone who has their own SketchUp or otherwise renderings of campus. Okay. So what about if you have, um, you know, this is a public-facing map, um, obviously, but what if you have something that you want like, secure for administrative purposes or so forth? Can you set up security for serving different maps for different services? Yeah. So one of the things we can do, let me go ahead and give you, bring you guys to the account page because that's important. Let me find it. Here we go. So there's... Um, something that you guys only see, and it's this page. This page allows you guys to manage your users. This is the University of Denver, by the way. You'll see how many people they've added to the campus map. Um, some little tangent, I'm sorry, Michelle, but you just remind me. Um, we can go ahead and split up the work as well, right? So you guys can limit what people get to work on. What I mean by that is that Megan can only control the parking lot category. Brittany can only um, you know, edit content. And Shana, or Shanna, can only edit the virtual tours. So you guys can split up what people get to work on. As far as, um, you know, from a security standpoint, you guys can absolutely create, let's say, a dummy account, like an admin account that you 
provide people with the login to so that they can log in and see maybe sensitive information or other information you don't want to post to, you know, let's say every end user that visits um, your uh, campus map. But to speak can, to security, can someone have like a multiple? Can you do multiple maps through Campus Bird, or is it just one output map solution? I see. Well, we can do multiple instances of Campus Maps. In fact, we have one client, Skidmore, who has a Campus Map. Then they have another instance of Campus Bird, so a brand new URL, and they just want to do it for sustainability. So they have a sustainability map that their sustainable office uses, and a Campus Map that the whole university uses. So we can make as many different instances of your campus map as you want for any type of different information. Now the content management system, would you have two different CMS mm -hmm. interfaces or would you have one that you can manage the two within there? From what I know, it's two different content management systems. So you have a URL with one and then a separate URL has its own set of information and its own CMS. Gotcha. So if someone wants to get going with integration for mm -hmm. this, what type of data and format what do you, you know, does Campus Bird start with to get this going? Right, so of course we can do live data feed integrations and we can work on taking the data you guys have and just reflecting it into Campus Bird. Otherwise, we do have something called a bulk upload spreadsheet. Now the bulk upload spreadsheet, it just is, is an XML file where we ask you guys and you can just literally copy paste, you know, the names of buildings or locations, uh, a lot long and any type of text description, that way we can bulk upload something into Campus Bird without requiring you guys to log into CMS and doing it by hand. Um, but otherwise, again, there's that live data feed integration, which is the easiest and quickest way to get a lot of information onto Campus Bird all at once. So do, does someone send you GIS data or CAD data as well for the, for the geographic content? So for the, for the geographic content, um, you mean for, for the locations, correct, not the rendering? Sure. Okay. So, yeah, like in, in the example of Indiana University, they're sending us exactly that. Uh, but it's more of a live data feed integration. Um, for actually adding, let's say that we're getting a fresh campus bird project off the ground and you don't want us to build that data feed, then I think the only options we have available are using that bulk upload spreadsheet, which you guys fill out, or logging into the content management system and doing it by hand. Okay. So tell me what an uh, implemented implementation schedule would look like. Like how long will it take and, you know, what would they need to provide? Sure. Um, yeah, great question. So the, the implementation, whoops, excuse me, um, implementation schedule for Campus Bird luckily is pretty quick. Uh, what we do is we obviously do the 3D rendering of Campus, which, you know, we'll ask you for basic pictures of buildings, but we also use a lot of satellite imagery to find out what everything looks like. Um, so we're going to create the map, do the rendering, teach you guys how to use the content management system, and do any other stuff like interior renderings, 360 degree panoramas, all within about 60 to 90 days. Right? So we give that information to you, and then most of our clients launch within about four to six months. Right? We could launch after 90, 60 to 90 days, but a lot of clients want to take the time to firm up their information to make virtual tours before sending it live to the website. Okay, and I guess the punchline question is how much does this cost? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that is uh, the big one. As you save it for last. Um, well, I can give you guys a basic framework of how we break down uh, the cost structure. So there's two parts of it. Uh, we have a subscription cost, which you subscribe to the software, and an upfront cost, which is just a one-time deal. So the upfront cost varies, of course, depending on the scope of work, you know, whether you want to do the basic campus bird, uh, maybe you want to add in a whole bunch of other cool stuff, that totally varies. Um, and it's hard to, to quote over the phone, you know, without having taken a pretty good look. Um, but the subscription, luckily, is a pretty consistent number. Uh, with the subscription, you guys obviously get full access to the CMS. You can make as many edits as you want. Um, you know, that's, that's really completely unlimited. We also do all software uh, updating and support, right? So we host the thing, we keep the software up to date. Again, really all you have to do is add that embed code to the website and you're pretty much done from a technical perspective. Um, you also get a full-time client services representative for any kind of uh, questions, concerns, or updates and they're in the office 40 hours a week um, to be reached. So that's what you get with the subscription and that varies. It probably goes from about five 
to $9,000 per year, again, depending on the size of the institution and the scope of work. Okay, well, great. Uh, you know what? Right on time almost. We are done with our questions. Awesome. So, Brian, was there anything else that you wanted to say to our attendees? Well, I just want to thank you guys for joining uh, and checking us out. Um, you know, of course, it's an honor to be here. We're having a great time in the CFTA uh, being a part of this. So, um, and again, if anyone does want any other information, I think uh, my, my, at least my name and email are accessible, and I'd be happy to to tell anyone a little bit more or set up another one of these demonstrations just for your university. But mainly, thanks for hopping on and checking us out. Well, great. Thank you, Brian. Uh, this concludes today's webinar. You know, many thanks to you, Brian, uh, for, for putting all this work together for today's presentation. Mm -hmm. And to all of our attendees out there, to learn more about CFTA webinars, please visit us at www.cfta.org. All right. Thank you.